and here's a wrap of what's trending in AI. Generative AI boom poses water problem for big tech. In global news, big tech, a grouping of the world's most influential and successful technology companies, has reportedly received massive scrutiny on its increasing use of water. Microsoft disclosed that its global water consumption rose by more than a third from 2021 to 2022, climbing to nearly 6.4 billion liters. While Google's total water consumption at its data centers and offices came in at 21.1 billion liters in 2022, a 21% increase on the year before. As world leaders gather to deliberate a sustainable future at COP28, researchers warn that if the growing water footprint of AI models is not addressed the issue could pose as a roadblock to the socially responsible and sustainable use of AI. University of California researcher Shaolei Rin told CNBC, OpenAI's popular AI technology, ChatGPT belts 500 milliliters of water for every 10 to 50 prompts, depending on when and where the popular Shibo is deployed. Businesses struggle to adopt AI due to legacy systems and skills gap. And finally, South African enterprises pursuing innovation are said to be grappling with adopting artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies due to historical challenges such as legacy systems and IT skills gap. This is according to the BCX Digital Innovation Index Report 2023, a report which evaluated 42 organizations in South Africa. According to the study, which is a research collaboration between IT services company BCX and consulting firm EY Parthenon, found that there is significant enthusiasm for artificial intelligence. Regulatory limitations, the unavailability of high-quality talent to lead innovation, and geopolitical and socio-economic constraints often hinder organizational agility, preventing them from emulating the nimbleness of startups or the scalability of tech giants, notes the index. That's all from Michelle AI, you're up to date. I'm not yet ready to say thank you to Chanel. She is, after all, HR AI, but I can just say that was uh, Chanel AI. Let's go straight into the discussion with Professor Tsilizi Marala, next director of the United Nationals University and the UN Undersecretary General uh, with Fifi Peters. Now, back in 2019, South Africa set up a presidential commission on the fourth industrial revolution to prepare the country for an AI-dominated world. The 4IR commission involved government and private sector as well as academia, who made eight recommendations to ensure that South Africa was not left behind in the digital revolution. These included education on AI, building AI-related infrastructure, and even establishing a national AI institute. South Africa can tick some of these boxes in terms of these recommendations, but others remain outstanding. We're joined by Professor Chilizi Marwala, the Rector of the United Nations University, as well as the UN Under Secretary General for more on this. Prof, thanks so much for your time. First of all, welcome home. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am very, very happy to be back uh, uh, in South Africa, but it's only for four days. Okay. And I am going to be headed back uh, to the COP and then to... Tokyo, Tokyo, which is my new home. Yeah, yeah, I thought that you'd be here uh, for the Christmas, but uh, clearly not the case. But uh, I want to talk to you about the progress that you say that we have made as a nation in terms of how artificial intelligence is unfolding, as it were. You wrote an article in a, a local media um, platform talking about some progresses, notwithstanding the fact that a lot more still needs to be done. In terms of progress, what have we been able to get right so far? Well, I think I should put it into perspective that the, a lot still needs to be done. Uh, but there are good things that have been done. We have strong educational institutions and there have been a number of initiatives to educate people around AI. Absolutely. I mean, uh, this is the strongest university system in the African continent. You just have to look at the global uh, the, the rankings and how South African rankings actually fare. You sure. know, University of Johannesburg, University of Cape Town, Stellenbosch, University of Pretoria. But in the specific areas of uh, artificial intelligence and the related disciplines that are required for one to grow and become really adept in, in the field. Well, I mean, we can do more. We should do more. But certainly, we have expertise. Okay. 
uh, these courses are being taught at our universities. The University of Johannesburg has a compulsory AI course. You can go and study data sciences at the University of Pretoria. You can go and study a master's in AI at the University of the Witwatersrand. So we do have capacity. This is one place uh, in the world where you can actually be able to learn almost the whole technology is in its entirety. There are areas where we need to improve. I think uh, on chip making, computer chip making, we definitely are not where we are supposed to be. We do certainly do not have capacity to make computer chips, semiconductor chips, but certainly we have made progress. But let's look at other factor. We recommended that uh, establish an AI institute. Yes, the AI institute has been established. I was still a vice chancellor of the University of Johannesburg when we launched it. It is between the Tranny University of Technology and the University of Johannesburg. Is that enough? No. I think the private sector, the role of the private sector much, must be much, much more. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to integrate these institutes in what is happening in the private sector. We need to integrate what is happening in the private sector, which is quite impressive in South Africa. Even startups that you see in South Africa, uh, whether it is Lilapa or any other st AI startups, they are impressive. You know, we need to fund them uh, better, but certainly they are impressive. So we need to integrate it. So let's, let's look at the issue of in infrastructure. Do we have all the infrastructure that we need? No. But we do have a high performance computing facility at the CSIR, which is able to do quite a great deal of work that probably can't be done in much of the African continent. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, the infrastructure for connectivity, the infrastructure for data storage. We absolutely are there. Is it enough? No. Sure. You know, so uh, progress has been made but we can make more progress. Sure. And I suppose uh, maybe in my um, the sort of questioning around whether we are there at a, an academic and uh, education level, uh, I suppose it speaks to the broader topic of inclusion, which uh, your opinion piece actually argues for, because it does talk about expanding these skills and access to these facilities to the broader uh, South African community, which we know right now is presently not the case. But in terms of the more that can be done, so you do outline I'm going to call it an eight-point plan or an eight-point uh, list of recommendations as to you know, how we really get to the next level, as it were, as a country. Just take us uh, through those uh, briefly and whose role it is then to do what? Well, I mean, the first one is to educate people on AI. It's the role of the private or the, uh, the, the, the university system. It's the role of uh, the Department of Education. But it's also the role of the private sector. Uh, because all of us have to learn this technology, it is transformative, and all of us have to uh, ensure that we are in the ecosystem of its activities so that we can increase our productivity. The second recommendation was the establishment of the AI Institute. Mm -hmm. The third recommendation was to use uh, technology such as AI to remanufacture, to build the, the manufacturing sector in South Africa. Because we have lost, we have de-industrialized, primarily because we have not invested in the technologies of production. And then the fourth one is to create a data center. Mm. Data is the engine that makes AI work. Without data, AI does not work. We need to measure data so that we can address this issue of the divide between the data-rich countries and data-poor countries. You know. The other recommendation was to incentivize the adoption of these technologies. Sure. I think government can come to the party here. The other um, recommendation is to build the infrastructure, whether it is the infrastructure of, 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 of storage, whether it is the infrastructure of uh, connectivity, uh, whether it is the infrastructure of computing. Uh, and then the other recommendation is to teach uh, AI and related technologies to lawmakers so that they can be able to craft laws that make sense, you know. Talking about laws that make sense, it 
perhaps maybe is a, uh, a little uh, easier said than done. If you take, uh, for example, what is happening in the European Union right now, where uh, lawmakers and regulators are grappling over uh, what the right kind of policy and regulatory framework for AI looks like right now, uh, there's discussions as to you know whether to take the US approach and have a more lighter touch approach to things, or whether one does it like China. But it looks like in the U EU, uh, there's a bit of a stalemate in, in how, how that gets done. Just your thoughts on on that specifically, sir, and what a perhaps a, a solid uh, AI regulatory framework could look like for South African Africa at large. Well, I mean, for me, uh, 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 my understanding of this topic is that uh, the objective is to maximize the good that has to come from this uh, technology, mm. but at the same time, minimize the bad that comes out of this technology. Um, these two things are actually interlinked. Sometimes when you are, m you, you are taking an action uh, to uh, uh, enable our hospitals to have an AI-enabled uh, diagnostic tool, it can be misused. Uh, uh, people's data uh, privacy might have been violated. You know. uh, informed consent might not have been observed. You know. So some of them are coupled. So what do we need to do is to maximize the good and minimize the bad. What you weigh as the most important aspect and to what extent is important is what we call choice. This is what lawmakers must choose. If we are risk averse, we are going to put more emphasis on the risks, on minimizing the risk. If we are opportunity orientated, uh, then we have to, uh, then, th th then we're going to maximize, we're going to concentrate on maximizing the good that comes out of this technology. And where you are, it's a choice. It's a choice uh, that actually inform, is informed by what your aspirations are. Somebody was describing Silicon Valley compared to what is happening in Africa. And he actually put it very well. He says, in Silicon Valley, much of the technology is driven by opportunities. Whereas in much of the African continent, much of the technology is actually driven by need. Necessity, I was going to say that. Uh, absolutely, you know. Uh, so we, need, we absolutely have to understand we have, th there are going to be different approaches. Talking about Silicon Valley, I was recently in Mazda City uh, over in uh, uh, Abu Dhabi. So, and uh, within that city, they uh, actually host the, uh, I think, one of the world's first AI universities. And they're on a massive offensive to attract the best minds in the world in this particular area to uh, educate but also contribute to the development of the uh, the UAE at large as, as, as well. You also tackle the issue of brain drain and some of the, the, the recommendations that you've put forward and I just wonder how you reckon Africa, within South Africa can compete with other parts of the world that are going all out to uh, recruit some of the best minds, some of them even coming from this country and the continent. So uh, what would it take? Or are we in a losing match just to, given the fact that we might not have the same currency uh, and firepower as them to do so? Well, I think South Africa has many, many good things going on for them. I think with the right policy orientation, you can actually be able to attract talent. Sure. I think South Africa itself has quite an impressive talent pool. Uh, and I think with the right policies and the right incentives, you can actually reduce uh, the people, the flow of people who are uh, emigrating. We need to change the conditions so that people stay. It's important. It is important for our economy. It is important for the development of our people. It is important for the long-term future of South Africa. 
I couldn't agree with you more. So, but thanks so much for uh, joining us on our uh, new segment, AI Africa, today. Just giving us your thoughts on how the continent can continue powering forward in a, uh, I don't even know if we can call it nascent anymore, because after the pandemic, we had a tectonic shift in the growth of artificial intelligence. But uh, my many thanks to uh, the professor, Professor Chilizi Marwala, Rector of the United Nations University, as well as the UN Undersecretary for joining us in studio all the way from Tokyo. In fact, he came from Dubai before he came here, but for another episode of AI Africa. Helping us wrap it up, of course, uh, you can catch it uh, again next week, Friday. But for now, it's back to Power Lunch. <laughs>